Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at configuring Snort IPS. We'll be discussing Snort IPS configuration steps. There's seven of them. We'll be looking at, we'll talk about how to download that Snort OVA file, how to install the Snort OVA file, configure virtual port group interfaces, activate virtual services, configure Snort specifics, enable IPS globally or on desired interfaces, and then finally how to verify that Snort IPS is running. This episode is part of my series on network security. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. To deploy Snort IPS on supported devices, there are seven steps you have to follow. This is a summary of these steps and the following slides I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on each one of these. But the first one here is to download your, your OVA file. Once again, this is that virtual machine file. Then we're gonna install that virtual machine. Next, we're gonna configure some virtual port group interfaces because remember Snort needs two virtual port groups. Then we'll activate our virtual servers. We'll configure Snort here, and that's either IPS or IDS mode. And then we'll go through, talk a little bit about the settings. Finally, we'll enable IPS globally or on the interfaces. And finally, last step is to verify Snort. Step one is to download that Snort OVA file. Now, OVA stands for Open Virtualization Archive, and this is a file that contains a compressed, installable version of that virtual machine. If, you, if you've done any virtualization, you probably know about OVAs already. Now, the service OVA file is not bundled with the Cisco IOS XE release images. So it doesn't come with your iOS um, automatically. What you have to do is the OVA files may be pre-installed in the flash on the, on the router, but it's also recommended here that you use the latest OVA downloaded from cisco.com. That way you have the latest configurations and settings and, and make sure you have that most current file. Step two, installing that Snort OVA file. Now, remember the OVA file must be downloaded and saved to a location on your, IS, your ISR router. Most, most of the time you download it and save it to Flash. Then to install that OVA file, we use the virtual service install command here. You specify the name. So we have the keyword name. You put in the name of it. Once again, following the standard naming conventions, anytime you set up a service and you have to put a name in there, most people do use all capital letters. Then you say the package. Now this is the file URL of our package. So we've stored it in flash right there with the whole name of that. And this needs to be done in privilege exec mode. So you can't do it in user exec mode, it needs to be done. And the length of the name is 20 characters and the complete path of the OVA file must be specified. So you have to have that. So this here is, is an example of how you would install that process. Once you have it installed, you can use the show virtual service list here. And that would be show virtual list command. And what that does is it displays the status of the installation of all applications installed on that virtual service container. Step three is to configure our virtual port group interfaces. Remember, we have to have two virtual port groups, VPGs, interfaces here, and they must be configured along with their guest IP addresses. Now, for our example that we're working through right here, VPG0, so from privilege exec mode, going to global configuration, interface, virtual port group 0, so VPG0 VPG here. This is for management traffic to exchange with the IPS servers. Now the guest IPS, the guest IP address needs to be a routable 
IP address to connect to the signature update server, so cisco.com, and, and the external log server. This is used to log that container. One good thing to do is put your description in here. So we're saying we're a description of this is the management interface, and then this is a routable IP address, so you can get data and updates from cisco.com for our interfaces. Go ahead and configure that do that and then we configure our second one this is our second virtual port group here vpg1 and this is for that user traffic and this is all user traffic all user traffic comes into snort all user traffic goes out of snort using vpg1 here this should not be a routable interface and therefore um, we put a private IP address. First thing we did is put a description on here, and this is our data interface. All data travels in and out of Snort through this interface, and this is a non-internet routable IP address, so 192.168. You configure that, and that those are our two virtual port group interfaces. Step four is to activate our virtual services. Now, this next step here, you have to configure the guest IP addresses on the same subnet for the container side and, the, and activate that virtual service. So what we do here is we go into our virtual service, that name, that was named my, my IPS. Once again, it's in all caps, makes it stand out a little bit. Then we use uh, the VNIC gateway here and we specify our virtual port group and then our number, so VPG0 here. And this creates a virtual network interface, a, a VNIC here, and it is for the virtual service container group. So guest IP, and this specifies that IP address of our service. Then we do this basically the same command down here, VNIC gateway virtual port group one. We set up our guest IP address. And what this does is it configures a guest VNIC address for the VNIC gateway address. Once again, being an internal at address here. And then finally, what we do is we do the activate command. And notice our command prompt. We are in the configuring of our virtual server. So after we set up our virtual NICs here, we then go ahead and we activate it. And this applicates or sorry, activates the application here installed inside this virtual container service. If you like this episode on configuring Snort IPS and you get value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. Step five is to configure our snort specifics. Now the command right here, UTD engine standard. What this does is it configures the United Threat Defense standard engine and enters the UTD standard enter the UTD standard engine configuration mode. So we are going from global configuration mode, UTD engine standard. Now we are configuring our UTD engine at this point. Once again, United Threat Defense. Now, first couple things you put in here is the logging host and the logging syslog. And these commands enable the logging of emergency messages to the server. And you, you wanna have this set up so that way if you do have a problem, you can get notified right away. Then we have threat inspection. What this command here configures is that threat inspection for our Snort engine. From here, you can specify a couple things. You can specify the threat protection and the threat detection. And so it's either threat protection or threat detection. Now, threat protection here is IPS. So we're gonna do intrusion prevention system. Threat detection is intrusion detection system. So if you wanna set it up as IPS or sorry, IPS or IDS. Then we have the policy command here. And the policy command specifies three security policies that can be used by Snort. Now, these are based policies provided by the Cisco TAL security people. And these three policy settings 
have go from the least protection to the most protection. And so the first one here would be connectivity. So connectivity. And what this one here is, is this provides the least amount of protection as it prioritizes connectivity over security. There's approximately a thousand rules are preloaded using the connectivity policy. Then we have balance. So that's what we're setting up right here. Now, this is the default policy. It's recommended for your initial deployments. This policy attempts to balance the security needs and performance characteristics of your network. And there's approximately 8,000 rules are preloaded using that policy. And then the most secure here is security. And so it would be policy, then either connectivity, policy and balance, or policy and security. Now, security provides the most protection. It's designed for organizations that are exceptionally concerned about security. People deploy this policy to protect networks and that have lower bandwidth requirements, but a much higher security requirements. And there are approximately 12,000 rules that are preloaded using that security policy. Next couple lines here deal with the signature on when it should happen. So it occurs daily. And then also who can do the updates. We specify our logging levels and that's basically all the all the snort specifics you need to configure here in step five. Step six is to enable IPS globally or on desired interfaces. Now, what we have to do is to en enable it globally. Over here on the left, we have globally. So from global configuration mode, we enter UTD. We say all interfaces. So once again, this is globally. Then we have some in engine configuration. So engine standard, we're using our standard engine. We do a fail close. So if it fails, we closes, close it. And that's all you need to do to, en to enable your IPS globally. Now, if you wanna do it on selected interfaces, you have to go into each interface. So here we're gonna go into G000 and then UTD enable. If you wanna enable it on a second one, you go into that interface and you enable it there. So every interface you wanna enable your UTD um, engines on, you have to go into that interface. What we can also do here is you can also enable that UTD allow list feature. And what this does here is this enables you to identify different IPS signature IDs to be suppressed, to be not used. So you can basically put an exception in there for whatever reason, maybe because of how you're transferring data between locations, it your IPS is identifying that traffic and deleting it. And you don't want that to happen. So you, you want to go in and do that. Down here, you do UDT threat inspection, and then you create a whitelist. So we're gonna create a whitelist, and then you add your different signature IDs there to, to that list, so that way it's not processed in your IPS engine. Step seven is to verify our Snort IPS. After Snort IPS is implemented, it's necessary to verify that the configuration is correct for your network. Now, there are several show commands here that can be used to verify the Snort IPS configuration and operation. The first one here is the show virtual services list. And the com this command here displays an overview of the resources that are utilized by the application. The second here is show virtual service detail. And this command displays a list of the resources that are committed to a specific application, including the attached devices. Show UTD engine standard config. This command displays the UTD configuration. Show UTD engine standard status. Displays the status of that UTD engine. And finally, you can do a show platform hardware, QFP, active features, UTD standard. And what this command does here is it checks the data plane. It verifies increments for the end cap, D cap, redirect, and re-inject and also displays the, displays the health of green here. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on configuring Snort IPS. If you like this episode, 
and you got value out of it. And of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com, and you can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on network security. In the bottom right is one of my favorite episodes that I picked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode on my series of network security. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.